Hi, I'm Dan Costa, Editor-in-Chief of Worth.com, and I'm here at South by Southwest with a very important guest, Jenna Fiesel, the Head of Innovation at IDEO. We're going to talk about emerging technology, we're going to talk about XR, we're going to talk about AI, I think, to start with. We had dinner last night? Last night. Last night, we had a great roundtable of CTOs talking about AI, talking about how it's affecting business. What did you think of the talk? Did you get any key takeaways? Yeah, I mean, I think one of the things that stood out to me is something that I feel a lot whenever a new technology comes to the fore, and that is how you can use it almost as an excuse to reinvest and to really like rethink about investments you've made in the past in sort of related technologies. So, generative AI, everybody wants to put a large language model on it. And okay, that's probably not totally wrong, but uh, it's a really good moment to reassess how has data been flowing through your organization in the past? How is it really being used in the light of these new tools? Like, how might that data be activated in more useful ways? And all of that I saw translated um, through that room into sort of like, how can we sharpen people's focus, reallocate budgets, um, convince people of structural change that maybe they sort of like took some half, step, half steps towards in the go fi boom of like 2015 to 2018 mm -hmm. um, and actually make impact uh, at a bigger scale this time. So I'm really curious to see how that turns out. Yeah, it's amazing. And also I think that that idea of like looking back at the past and seeing what decisions you've made, um, you just finished a talk all about how augmented reality and AR are affecting our sense of self. And I think I just want to take a moment to like walk you through, get your take on like, we've had a, a couple of different technological revolutions now. I feel like all of them have changed how we see ourselves and we can just label them one, web 1.0, 2.0, 3.0, I guess we'll tell you, we'll be on now. But like, just what are your thoughts about like that first wave of internet where we were all online, nobody knew you were a dog, but that changed our conception of self. Um, so how did, what, how would you, uh, how did we get, how, how did that affect us now that we've got some time to see what the consequences are? Yeah, I mean, I think there's this sort of really interesting pendulum swing that I see happening. So back in the early days, people to even engage in the internet to some degree had to be creators. And I think that that gave people um, a little bit more of a stake in the places that they were making, even if that place was, you know, like a pretty nasty looking GeoCities page. Mm -hmm. um, the amount of effort and care that people needed to put in had to be balanced with some kind of social reward or tangible reward. Um, and I think you saw a lot of niche communities finding each other for the first time. Uh, in the talk I just gave, we, we referenced um, chat rooms for gay men in the 90s. Like that, those spaces are where sort of modern queer culture was codified in a lot of ways. And they probably wouldn't have been possible or at least not scalable without the internet. Um, and so I think that's, that's like a really interesting um, sort of social consequence that we have seen in the last you know, 10 or so years with gay marriage and all sorts of other expansion uh, of rights um, that I think does have this kind of direct lineage. Now, what does that mean for the consequences of social media 10 years from now? Whereas right now we sort of think of it as you know, overall quite negative. I'm not quite sure. I do think there's been this shift into <clears throat> more, you know, attention-based commodification in Web2. That's how the incentive structures work for most of the corporations that run those platforms. Um, and it's become less about building your own spaces and your own identities and more about sort of fitting into an inaccessible algorithm, um, which I think gets maybe more shade than it deserves. but. It is definitely a cultural force out there. Um, with emerging technologies, I think there is an opportunity to get deeper into creation. Like the metaverse platforms that are currently popular, things like Roblox, they're all about building and sharing what you build. Um, and I believe people express themselves through what they make in addition to their relationships with people. And a lot of these technologies let you do both. They let you make things and also share them and also make them collaboratively. And so, I mean, I think my utopian hope is that we all acknowledge a little bit more that we're made up of each other and we're made up of what we create. I think that's actually, I mean, the metaverse was obviously 
red hot two years ago. Now it's fallen away a little bit. Most people have, have logged on, used a, a VR headset. Um, but I think part of the disappointment is that they are expecting that same Web 2.0 experience where you log onto the platform and then you are the product and that's it. That's all you have to do. And I think, as you're pointing out, like there, there's a creative element that's here that you kind of need to put something of yourself out there in order to really understand what the potential is. And you've used more of these platforms than anybody I know. Um, like, What are some of those creative applications that people are using these, this platform for? Yeah, I mean, there's there's tons and tons of like sort of one-off or small-scale products that are in the market or that have been shown. Um, I think one of one of the ones that I find really interesting is called Anuma. They're a um, facilitated therapy and meditation experience, um, and they're they're aimed to help people feel feelings of connectedness and transcendence. And they do that by making some aspects of meditation really, really literal. So if you're thinking about time, suddenly trails begin to form um, behind your hands as they move, and you can um, stay in these altered states of consciousness much more easily because you have all of the support from the platform from their expert facilitation, and then you can do it with other people. So it's not a solo experience. It's you and a facilitator and people that you care about. And I think that that's really powerful and interesting. And I want to take lessons from that for larger commercial applications. Mm. Think about how spaces that are crafted with care can help people express themselves, connect, and build. I think the building part is really important. So as you look forward, you know, this technology, I mean, VR headsets have been around for a long time. The quality is getting much, much better with each new incarnation. Apple's in the market now. Like, what is it, what do you, what excites you in terms of what these platforms can do? What do you think we're going to be doing five years from now? Good question. I mean, I think that there's, and this isn't a terribly new insight, but I think we're approaching things from multiple directions. So we have a sort of small scale interventions into our lives like watches. Um, I might even classify like the meta Ray-Bans in that category where you're augmenting your sensory perception in a relatively small and contained way. Um, and then you have the sort of like full replacement or augmentation of something like a VR headset or the Apple Vision Pro. And everybody's dream is for these things to converge. Um, and I think it might happen. Uh, I think that there is still the potential for shared interfaces in, out in the world too. Um, so one of my past lives, I uh, uh, programmed, designed, installed, and even maintained interactive installations at kind of an architectural scale um, where they were designed for many people to interact with together. And I think these days, you know, there's the people with 75 grand, who buy a bunch of projectors and put them in a warehouse space and sort of make an exciting uh, media-based experience. And so I wonder if maybe there's a third pole here. There's the, the small interventions on our bodies. Mm -hmm. There's how we might augment full senses like vision. But then there's also how do we activate the physical spaces around us with shared digital layers. And I guess I'm excited to come to the middle of the triangle now maybe instead of the middle of the line. Fair enough. Jenna, thanks so much for taking the time to talk to us. I really appreciate it. Yeah, no problem. This is a great conversation. Thank you. You can find more information on Worth.com and Taconomy. Thanks so much. I'm Dan Costa. I'll see you soon.